there will be a switch up there. There's already been a switch up. There's a whole offensive coaching staff that has now been replaced. That's not a culture shock. I don't know what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, the New Orleans Saints are making substantial changes to their team. Some of these moves you expected, but others may shock you. Backup quarterback Jameis Winston has been making the media circuit rounds, doing tons of interviews as he is set to enter free agency. It looks as if his time with the New Orleans Saints is about to be officially over. He did an interview with Sports Illustrated where he tried to do his typical pull on the heartstrings to New Orleans Saints fans. Ooh, I love New Orleans, so you should love me. And then said something that I think is absolutely absurd. My goal is to be, uh, and my, my desire is to be a Super Bowl winning starting quarterback in this league you know and and right now you know that doesn't look like it doesn't look like a very clear picture of with the new orleans saints it doesn't look like a clear picture with the new orleans saints i'm sorry Jameis winston you being a super bowl winning quarterback doesn't look like a clear picture with any team in the nfl at this point we know Jameis winston failed to maintain a 17 point lead when he filled in for Derek carr in the green bay packers game what do you think about it if the saints would have just won that one game they would have been in the playoffs last year we have also documented on this channel Jameis winston making cryptic messages on social media by retweeting comedy skits that slammed dennis allen that slammed Derek carr he appears to be a part of this gossiping click a click that may be on the outs with the new orleans saints so it seems like the saints are finally moving on from Jameis winston the only problem is they may eat six million dollars in dead money in doing so but jake hayner the fourth round pick out of Fresno State in the 2023 draft. This man looks like he is set to be the backup quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. He had a hiccup last season being suspended for the first six games due to violating the PED policy. Jake Hayner alleges that he never ever violated this policy and believes it was a mistake. Saints fans have been taking their frustration out on Derek Carr and it happened at Mardi Gras. They had the Mardi Gras float, the red zone zombie showing Derek Carr all messed up right here. This is what they decided decided to do this is how they decided to support their franchise quarterback despite the fact that Derek Carr in the latter half of the season was leading one of the number one red zone offenses in the entire NFL so some of you New Orleans Saints fans can continue to sit there and eat your nasty ass beignets that definitely plump you up a little too much but that doesn't change the fact that Derek Carr is going to be your franchise quarterback this year you got to respect the fact that the dude put his body on the line last year for this football team and despite some of the bullshit in the locker room he had them within an inch of making the playoffs and winning the division and Carr has a much better attitude than I would have had with this disrespect saying he can't lie this depicts exactly what I felt like the first half of the season so I understand wow Carr also said we're fine just have to build off the last half of the year when we were shredding backing up the claim that they were doing quite well in the red zone in the second half the amount of bullshit that this guy has gotten from some of these fans in New Orleans it's absolutely insane that he still made maintains a positive attitude and it just goes to show you how you're supposed to handle some of this negative energy how you're supposed to deal with this adversity unlike some of these other veterans on the New Orleans Saints who seem to let it all get to their head and they blow up on social media one of the players who let social media get to their head is none other than Michael Thomas a beloved Saints player who's clearly on the outs with the organization after he made several posts online openly talking shit on Derek Carr and Dennis Allen. He did this and we covered this extensively. Carr even responded to it in an interview with some of his former friends with the Las Vegas Raiders. But here's the funniest thing that Michael Thomas did recently. He recently tried to act as if the Saints just are so bad, are so horrible that they could not attract any offensive coordinators. That's why the hire is taking so long. He's made other posts about this that he has since deleted. But right now, while he criticizes Anola.com writer, says he won't write why no OC is taking the job they interviewed. When the quarterback coach of the Houston Texans elected to stay in Houston, Thomas did make a post laughing about this, but he has since deleted it. The guy says the Saints can't attract an offensive coordinator, and then they grabbed Clint Kubiak, one of the hottest offensive coordinator candidates on the open market, coming out of the San Francisco 49ers as their passing game specialist. The Saints have officially hired him after the Super Bowl, and Dennis Allen was recently interviewed, saying that he believes that his scheme is the best in the NFL right now. I feel like this is the best scheme that gives your players the best chance to have success that's going in the National Football League right now. And, and uh, I think Clint 
uh, is highly intelligent. Many fan bases wanted Kubiak as their offensive coordinator. You have a Pittsburgh Steelers radio host talking about that. The Clint Kubiak thing really pisses me off. He takes the Saints job. Are you kidding me? Horrible job by the Steelers to not even talk to him. Do your due diligence. Do your homework. This guy was highly sought after. The fact that the Saints were able to lure him and get him to sign on as their offensive coordinator just shows how much other people around the NFL respect a quarterback like Derek Carr, respect some of the playmakers they have on the offensive side of the football, and respect the Saints organization as a whole. You don't choose that job as their offensive coordinator unless you really believe in the talent of their franchise quarterback. The Saints have some huge roster decisions to make, but Cam Jordan looks to be part of the future with the New Orleans Saints due to the fact that he signed a brand new contract just before the start of last season. However, injuries slowed him down this year, and Dennis Allen was quite frank about this. But look, let's be honest. I mean, as we all get older, we, we, we start to slow down a little bit. I don't think he's at that point. And I think it's up to us to try to find the positions and the places to put him in uh, to allow him to still be successful. So the Saints have some older players on their roster right now. It seems like they may make a decision on some guys on the defensive side of the football. Like I mentioned earlier, I don't think Cam is going to be a significant decision. But it's not like this is the old Saints defense that's top five all the time. They do a great job forcing turnovers, but they're definitely getting slower overall. We'll see if injuries are the problem and if they could bounce back this upcoming season. But one of the more notable things that Cam Jordan talked about is this idea of a culture change in New Orleans. He's saying it's obvious and saying it needs to happen. I mean, you go three years of not making the playoffs, whatever it is, you can't just stay in lukewarm water. So whether you got heated up or drop some ice cubes in it, so there's got to be a shock. And that being said, I mean, whether that's the way we attack practice, that's the way we attack games, that's the way we attack, you know, our off season, there will be a switch up there. There's already been a switch up. There's a whole offensive coaching staff that has now been replaced except for the tight ends coach. I, if that's not a culture shock, I don't know what is. That wasn't foretelling. These are factuals. So the biggest changes for New Orleans, I believe, will continue to happen on the offensive side of the football. We know the Saints have the worst cap situation in the NFL. They do this every year where they're significantly under the cap and then they restructure contracts and find a way to get even. They've already started the process by restructuring Eric McCoy's contract. It looks like the center Eric McCoy, who did yell at Derek Carr in the middle of last season during a Carolina Panthers game. He has since said that he had some personal drama going on at the time. Because just to be honest with you, I had things not even related to that that I had going on at home that I feel like I brought into work, which is something that's very unprofessional with me, so. Who knows what this guy had going on? Perhaps he was arguing with his wife. Is that a possibility? And he's literally taking out his household issues on Derek Carr. Put it all on DC. But either way, the center looks to be part of the future with New Orleans, and they have cleared up $7 million in cap space, but they got so much to go, $78 million to go. And I gotta say, Saints fans, they sort of just need to move on from this era that they really love with their franchise. Just like I need to move on from Derek Carr with the Raiders as a Raiders fan, some of these Saints fans need to move on from Drew Brees, need to move on from Michael Thomas, need to move on from Alvin Kamara and their glory days, which just no longer exist in 2024. I get that you have some nostalgia for these guys back when they were 25, but that's just not the case anymore. And I don't want to trigger Saints fans, even though it seems quite easy when you just point out basic facts, but when it comes to Drew Brees, the great Drew Brees, who does have a Super Bowl and was a great, accurate passer out there in New Orleans with Sean Payton, when you look at the facts, though, Derek Carr is 2-0, undefeated against Drew Brees and Sean Payton. If wins are all that matters, I hear people say this all the time, wins are all that matters for a QB. Well, DC4 is undefeated against your idols. One of the idols, Alvin Kamara, who had some negative energy last year, some awkward press conferences, some dirty looks and weird faces when he communicates with Jameis Winston, communicates with Michael Thomas on the sidelines. This man, Alvin Kamara, who luckily was only suspended for three games after beating and jumping a man with several people in Las Vegas at the Pro Bowl, this guy just significantly regressed last season. I don't know how you could watch him on the football field, watch some of the runs that he does and not notice the fact that he's lost a step, that he's significantly slower than he used to be. And you got people talking about the fact that maybe the Saints could trade Alvin Kamara. People are mocking up a seventh round pick as a possibility. Some Saints fans laughed at this notion, but when you look at how he performed last year, maybe you would be lucky to 
get a seventh round pick out of this guy. When you saw how Kendra Miller performed in the final few games of the season, there was a clear burst of energy and it just finally felt like the Saints had a real running back and a real running game for a little while. Keep in mind, Alvin Kamara elected not to play the final game of the Saints season. Michael Thomas was not playing either. The Saints looked significantly better on the offensive side of the football with A.T. Perry instead of Michael Thomas and Kendra Miller instead of Alvin Kamara. And the fact that Kamara didn't play in that final game was quite odd. Dennis Allen did mention that if they made the playoffs, Kamara would likely have been available the following week. It almost seemed like it was a choice for him not to play rather than something substantial like an injury really holding him back. NFL.com talked about the top cap casualties when it comes to the New Orleans Saints for this offseason. Alvin Kamara is number one. If the Saints did a post June 1st designation cut, this would open up $11 million in cap space, but $7 million in dead money. So you're netting just $3 million saving money, but maybe that's what you should do. Maybe you should just cut weight because the guy is not that productive anymore. And overall, you're still saving $3 million in cap space and you need that desperately. Another big shocker that would be rough because this guy is still productive is Demario Davis, 35 years old, getting up there, a great leader, great captain, very productive, but he has an $18 million cap hit in his final season. $12 million could be freed up with a post-June 1st cut. Maybe they'll just restructure this guy. Maybe they'll work out a new agreement, but the Saints desperately need to get cap compliant, so they would be fools not to consider something like this. You also have another one on the offensive side of the football that's not Michael Thomas, not Alvin Kamara, and this one would just hurt because this guy has such good character, such great effort throughout the 2024 season in his unique role. Taysom Hill could be a cut candidate, according to NFL.com, saying that he has a $15 million cap hit, and if he was a post-June 1st cut, it would open up $10 million, so you can save so much money if you make a decision on Demario Davis and Taysom Hill. It sucks because these guys have a great attitude and are still performing well, but unfortunately their cap hit is just insanely high. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. Will the Saints continue their culture shock and completely clean house on the offensive side of the football and perhaps even more on the defensive side? If you're still watching at this point in the video, I really appreciate it. Make sure you like this video if you have not yet and subscribe to this channel. For more NFL content from me, Wi-Fi Willie, peace out and I hope you have a good one.